not so sure if this is a review or if this is a rant. I'm going to say it's a rant because I did not like this movie. I disliked this movie. I hated Halloween Ends. There's going to be spoilers. I cannot remember the last time I left a film this disappointed in the movie. Especially from a franchise that I love and hold dear to my heart. I'm not kidding. This might be my least favorite film in the entire franchise. I realize I'm fresh off seeing the film, but I used to debate whether I disliked Resurrection or Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 more. But for now, that point is moot because this has effectively become my least favorite Halloween film. I was actually on the way home in the car with my dad and stepmom with my head against the window in unadulterated sorrow. I'm not exaggerating when I say this film unshakably disappointed me in a profound way. I wasn't expecting to be blown away. I'd vaguely seen some reviews and had an open-ended expectation of what I'd be seeing. I at least wanted the film to end the H4O trilogy with some sort of acceptable closure. I expected to sit in my theater seat and enjoy a Halloween film. But what the hell was that? It felt more like a below-average 2000s Lifetime movie about a girl falling in love with a psycho with Michael Myers popping in here and again. When it comes to the screenplay, at no point did I have any idea whether we were hitting a story beat, exposition, character development, etc. There were instances when a scene resonated with an attempt at suspense, only for me to find out they were building up to a simple conversation or to nothing or humor or there wasn't any suspense to it at all, there was no thrill. They had 6,000 different ideas how to end the Michael Myers legacy in this new trilogy in a satisfying way, and they threw every single one of them in there and forgot to do anything with Michael Myers, anything at all, and they barely inched into exploring each and every concept in 111 minutes, and we got a big pile of shit as a result. The film that was advertised to me and the film the previous two entries were building up to never happened. There's this kid, Corey Cunningham, whose character makes absolutely no sense. He accidentally killed a kid he was babysitting and now all of Haddonfield thinks he's a kid killer. But he just wants to live a life and wants to be left alone but he can't get away. Oh, but it turns out there was something going on with the kid. There was something wrong with him, I guess, maybe. A character even asked the question of whether the kid's death caused him to descend into madness or there was already darkness in him. And not only is it never answered, but there's nothing to answer. What's even the question? No one knows he's done anything wrong. Whatever catalyst that led to him sporadically becoming a savage and chaotic killer wasn't clear at all. He just gets knocked off the side of the bridge, meets Michael Myers, who is apparently still recovering from the end of the last movie, even though he seemed to be doing just fine murdering a small army of townsfolk, kills some homeless dude, I don't know what to make of that, and then he just starts killing people. He just becomes a serial killer. So on the one hand, it makes no sense that this kid who had a tough break sporadically becomes a theatrical and vicious serial killer. And on the other hand, it makes no sense that people suspect him of being a killer because they all they have to go on is his eyes. And then Corey and Michael Myers are working together, or, or the kid is killing people and Michael just shows up. But then Corey takes Michael's mask and, oh, Michael doesn't like that, so he just kills him too movie doesn't make any sense. What ends here exactly? How does Halloween end? Let's see. He shows up and kills Corey, who had just killed himself, who we don't know whether he was an apprentice or soulfully bond to Michael or whatever. Lori stabs him a few times and nails him to a table and then slices open a bunch of arteries and the whole town shows up and they're like, yep, yeah, we, we know what's been going on all night. We, we know what's going on. So you know, we're just going to string him up on top of a car and throw him into a body mulcher. The big face-off is Myers getting nailed to a kitchen table and then getting body mulched, even though he hadn't shown up hardly the whole movie. And what even was Allison's character? I couldn't figure out Allison for a second. She fell in love with Corey the minute she saw him and threw herself at him in every way she could. There's no chemistry or sensibility to their relationship. They both have issues. That's it. I'm not blaming the actress because she did fine in the, in the last two movies, but I could tell her performance was off 
because she didn't know exactly what she was supposed to be feeling. If I, if I read this script, I'd be like, am I supposed to be scared of Corey in this scene? Am I supposed to be turned on? Am I supposed to be mystified? Am I supposed to be turning into a killer myself? What's happening? You can just see in her eyes that she doesn't always know what expression, what emotion she's supposed to be giving off. And what about Lori? What even was her character in this one? She was the strongest one in the first film and arguably the second one too. And now she's just, she's just null. She starts threatening Corey despite having no idea about anything he's done. Just for being with her daughter. All because she saw Michael's eyes, like I said. She saw Michael's eyes. His eyes, it's just like Michael's eyes. What eyes? There's a shot where we're supposed to see into Corey's eyes and get some kind of cold chill, and he just looks half drunk and confused. This supposedly terrifying glare wasn't a void of demonic nothing. The, the glare was just like, huh, what? Like, he was just confused. I didn't see anything in his eyes. His eyes, there's no way that his eyes alone was that powerful to instill that much fear in this many people. The story was so convoluted. I mean, it went in every which direction, hoping something would come off the ground and take the story, and then it never happens. Not only was it convoluted, but the efficient and well-paced version of the story it was trying to be still wasn't good for this supposed explosive ending to this new Halloween trilogy. What about the kills going on around Haddonfield? Am I, am I being an idiot there? And seriously missing something there? There was someone hung and people were shot dead. Was I supposed to assume that this was Corey's doing? This was the rough draft of the rough draft of a rough outline for the rough draft of a stupid script that didn't know what it wanted to be. This movie sucked and I hated it. This is the kind of movie that comes out after seven entries and you don't know what else to do. It's not the kind of movie that's supposed to conclude a rebooted trilogy that started off with some serious heat. Pretty good first film. I like the second one. I had to talk about this movie and how much I disliked it. I'm sorry this is all over the place, but so was the movie. This is Poison Apple's Attack of the Screen with Noah Fryman. Good night.